I'm doing this so you don't have to. Look at this beige beauty. This is like something where the developers and the people who worked on this were like, we don't care, use the default color of plastic. That's what we're gonna go with. This is an IBM Aptiva 2270. And I bought this as a case, not as a computer. And it came with a computer on the inside. I was like so excited when I saw this and it booted up and it had Windows 98 on it. I had no idea when I bought this. I thought I was just buying a case and the person I bought it from was like, they're like, I'm, I'm gonna ship this to you. And it's got some hardware in there. So when I looked inside, some of the hardware had come apart, like the CPU cooler was off and a few of the things were weird. Uh, things were not plugged in, but I plugged everything back in, flipped it on and Windows 98 popped up on the screen. I wasn't even sure what the motherboard was. So I was like, okay, what is this? And I couldn't even really tell when I was looking at it. I knew it was a socket 370. So I ended up determining it was an Intel uh, i810 platform socket 370 motherboard with a Pentium 3 running at 930 megahertz or 933 megahertz. Plus it had 192 megabytes of RAM and a four, I think it's a four gigabyte hard drive in there and a CD-ROM drive. Don't even know how fast it is. Plus a floppy disk drive and a few other things, um, but a pretty minimal system and it works. But it kind of was a pain in the ass. Before we get started, let's head over to WhoKeys and unlock our copy of Windows. By using coupon code TS25, you can get 25% off these prices here. I use Windows 10 Pro. You can also get Windows 10 Home and both of these will upgrade to Windows 11. You can get that. Also note that the Windows 10 keys have been working with Windows 11. Google it and make sure that this is still a thing whenever you're purchasing your key. Also, I wanna note that if you get Windows 10 Home and you upgrade it to Windows 11, they will force you to use an online account. With Windows 11 Pro, however, you can use a local account, just so you know. You can also get Office 2019 with that same discount, or if you like, you can get Windows 10 Pro and Office 2019 in a bundle and save even more. So go ahead and put TS25 in here as your coupon code, hit it apply, and then you can see we can get Windows 10 Pro for 1485. Once you're finished, if you wanna access your key, you click on your name on the top, right click on user center and you'll see my purchase orders right here you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on view keys and codes then you will see your code right here just go ahead and copy this code press start type activate and you'll see activation settings come up click on that then click change product key right there you can paste in your code and hit next and then you will be activated it's very simple so don't pay those retail prices for your copy of windows or office head over to whokeys.com and use coupon code ts25 See, the thing about Windows 98 is it's not made to be used in, in 2022. The internet stuff, yeah, you can't really get online because the security protocols that it has are too outdated for most websites. Some websites will load some old websites, but it was impossible to just go and download drivers and stuff using Windows 98. I had to go to another machine, get the drivers and come back. And that's where the next problem comes in. USB plug and play for storage devices, not a thing. USB was barely a thing, but you always had to bring the drivers with you. So if you have a if you have a Logitech USB mouse or something like that, or if you have a USB drive, you're gonna have to get the CD-ROM that came with it out, put that in and install your drivers. So I was like, oh cool, I'll just grab the stuff and plug it in and it'll just, no, the USB doesn't work. I forgot it's been too long. So I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll grab the drivers I need and I'll burn them onto a Tayo Yudin CD-ROM disc, which I have a few Tayo Yudin discs in my drawer because why wouldn't you have that in your drawer? So I put some stuff on a disc, popped that in there and got a lot of stuff up and running. But then some stuff would crash or I would get, sometimes I like I installed some things and then I tried, tried to install a universal USB thing to get the plug and play working. And then all of a sudden my IDE stuff went away and it was just like, oh God, I ended up having to reformat. And it was like days of this and where I was like, you know what, this is stupid. I'm gonna get a network card. So I got, you know, a network card and installed that and while I was at it, I was like, I'm gonna upgrade everything. I'm gonna upgrade the network card and I'm also gonna put a GeForce FX 5500 in here. Because back then those GeForce cards, 256 megabytes of RAM, that's more than the system has with 192. So <laughs> why not put that FX 5500 in there? And that was right, I believe that was right after they purchased 3DFX. I'm not sure if there's any technology in there. I should probably do more research before I run my mouth, but hey, it's the internet. I don't know what that means. Anyway, so I decided to put that in there and a Linksys 10100 card. Okay, so there was a couple different auctions for the Linksys things. I got the one that was $7 that didn't come with the driver's installation CD because I was like, oh, it's no big deal. I'll just use USB. And I, and I was like, wait a minute. I already ordered this and I just realized I, I remembered I can't use USB. So I had to burn another disc just with the Linksys drivers, but I did it. Once I got the Linksys drivers installed, then my life became easy. Now, even though the Windows 98 is a totally different network 
I guess the, the network works differently on Windows 98 than it does on newer versions. As long as you go onto your new version of whatever operating system you have and just turn on a few compatibility things for sharing, then suddenly you can have a network share folder on your Windows 98 machine and then you can access that from your other machine like Windows 10 or Linux or whatever and just drag and drop stuff to it. So after I got that 10100 card installed and we got on the network, created a share folder, I was like, yes. And then I could just go to my Windows 10 machine and just have a folder open that is the Windows 98 box and I'm dragging and dropping whatever I need so I could try different stuff or whatever. Got a version of Enforce, which is for you know the NVIDIA drivers. Got a version of that that works just fine. And it was like, yes, now we can play games. And that's really what this is all about, the games. That's the only reason anybody would, would be installing Windows 98. I can't think of any other reason unless you're some unless you're a major government running extremely outdated software. I can't even think of a school system that still runs Windows 98, but I bet there's some governments out there who do probably like nuclear power plants running Windows 98 second edition, not Windows 2000. But Windows 98, it was compatible with so many games. You had the DOS, uh, I guess the DOS layer on the bottom, the Windows 9X kernel, and then Windows 95, 98, 98 SE, and ME all had this DOS underpinning. So you could play the DOS games if you needed to, and you could play all of the Windows games up to this point. And this was a golden era for games. There were more best games ever during this time than I think on the PC, than I think probably during any other time. And if you look at this time on other systems as well, you're gonna be like, oh my God, there were best games of, of all time coming out for all kinds of different systems at this time. What was going on? What were the developers doing? Well, they weren't focusing on microtransactions and live services at this point. So maybe that has something to do with it. Let's just, I'm gonna read through a list here of a few of the games that were available during this time. Like Deus Ex, that came out right around the Windows 2000 time, but Windows 2000 was not a gaming system. So Deus Ex, Diablo 1 and 2, um, then we have Dungeon Keeper 1 and 2, which were amazing games. The Fallout games 1 and 2, the really awesome Fallout games that had like that darker sense of humor and weren't too campy like the new games. They still had that grim underpinning that they never lost sight of. And uh, well, I can get into, I can do a whole video on that. Uh, Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2, uh, AVP2, how many hours have you put into that? Like killing your friends, crawling around on the ceiling, you weirdo. Um, what else we got? The Grim Fandango game from LucasArts. Half-Life 1 came out during this period, and we didn't need Steam for that. Just, you know, Half-Life 2 came out, and we're all like, what is this Steam business? What? We hate this. Uh, Monkey Island 2 and 3. Uh, this was like a golden age for just LucasArts games. Uh, Planescape Torment. Quake 2 and Quake 3. And Quake 2 was average. Quake 3 was... I had a lot more fun with Quake 3 because, you know, the fighting and all that stuff. And we had to give Unreal 1, which blew everybody's mind. I remember looking at Unreal and being like, crap, because this is it. It's photorealistic. I can't... Like, when I first saw that game, I was like, that's it. The graphics have... We're, we're finished with graphics. That's it. No, no, it couldn't get any better. The Sims came out during this time. People still playing that. I think we're on Sims 4 or 5... 4 now with a million... The extra things and microtransactions and everything else. Uh, Warcraft 2 was during this period of time, just before WoW came out. There's an enormous amount of games. Icewind Dale, the Baldur's Gate games. I don't feel like I'm live, leaving something off the list. MechWarrior 3 and 4. When you're first installing Windows 98, you get this. This is like select your components, stuff you want to install. Communications. This is like for modems. Uh, but also maybe for internet, I don't know. Desktop themes. Of course we're going to install the desktop themes. That's like the biggest thing on the list, 31 megabytes. Online services and communications are two different things. Probably not going to need communications. Web TV for Windows. All right, no, we're not going to use any of that. So doing custom. Captiva 98. Sure. Let's do it. So whenever you get to this part, how many of you do this? Take this out and you're like, oh, okay, now it's time to get the serial number going. So yeah, that's what I do. I take it out. This number, it's like an old phone number from a friend whom, who'd I forgotten about. And now that I'm typing it again, it's like, I almost remember it. I basically had these things memorized back in the day. Okay, pa past self. What the hell is that? What in the hell is that? Past self, please. Why did you not just rewrite the thing? Um, I think it's a Q. What is that? It's a fish.
I thought the Undertaker was about to show up. What the hell? I <laughs> got <at> this. <laughs> Music. <laughs> yes. It's just freaking music. Uh, I'll change the the, the uh, resolution so you can see it a little easier. It's too 800 by 600. Why not? Yeah, sure. There we go. Giant thing. Connect to the internet. That's going to be a pain in the ass. Failed to load the connection thing. It's just, it's, you know, Windows. That's what happens. Speed up. Register now. Discover Windows 98. He wants me to put in my DVD. I'm not going to do that. This is just, or my, my CD, I should say. This is to simulate how it was. Now, this is just how it is whenever you're using Windows 98 or old stuff. Your CDs are always piled up up there. You know, why does it not change my desktop? Okay. My desktop wallpaper disappeared. I have no idea why. Let's fix it. Yeah, this will this will do. Stretch, apply. Yes, just go, Ghost in the Shell. Came out in 95, but uh, it'll work. You know what, let's just install Alice. I never finished this game, so this might be a good time to do it. This is American McGee's Alice. American McGee uh, was originally one of the level designers for Doom 2, and uh, some of his levels are incredibly cunning, but this is really where you started to see the inside of his mind a little bit. I think he, I think he needed Alice. So let's open this up and give it a try. This came out right in the middle of the Windows 98 era. Let's see what's inside this box. Maybe open it the right way. There we have our discs. This is probably the best way to get Alice. This game keeps going on and off of all the different digital marketplaces and stuff. So yeah, this is still the best way to get it. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, look, a game manual. Remember these? Like what they actually told you. Installation and gameplay guide. Someone had to write this. I feel like some of these game manuals have as much effort put into them as the actual games themselves, especially for the bigger games like the RPGs and stuff. Just load and save screens. What's this? Okay, we've got, uh, what is this? We've got a case book. Oh, cool. See, you got these little extra things here. Let me get the light over here so you can see. Get a load of this. Yeah, I should do a dramatic reading of this one day. Anyway, let's get the CD out. Is this only one disc? Oh no, it better not be a DVD. Disc one? Oh, it's multiple discs. Yes. All right, so there's disc one. How does this work? And disc two. All right, let's install Alice. Okay, this will be better than the CRT, even though the CRT is beautiful and glorious. Uh, install Alice, shall we? Do I have DirectX? Let's install DirectX. Shit. Wow. Oh, it's already there. Okay, good. We're good. Let's install Alice. This is how you used to install games, just like old, you know, programs. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. We got the, the CD key. Uh, I'm just going to put this in games. Sorry, American. I love you, but... I want a short, simple directory. EA Games, American McGee's Alice. No, 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 no. Just American McGee's Alice is fine. I don't even know what speed the CD burner is. It doesn't have anything on it other than just compact disc. See this over here? It just says compact disc. I have no idea how fast it is. So, yeah. All right, this is going to take a while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a cup of coffee in, at midnight. not finish you know i forgot because i'm just not used to windows 98 you don't really have a primary monitor you could download a program like ultramon back in the day i think 2.7 was the latest version but you could just drag and drop the taskbar to the other window uh, come on come on there we go now it's over here i forgot that you could do that see that's that's how long it's been okay you know what? i'm not actually even going to play uh, alice because it wants me to have opengl installed and i thought i did but now I've got to go back to my other computer. So we're not going to play any games in this video. I'm done. I'm done messing with this thing. It's fun. It's pretty. But this is not worth my time anymore. So I don't think anyone should be using Windows 98 for gaming anymore. I got this to run just fine on my Windows 10 PC. And I can run this on my Windows XP machine over here in the corner. I'll have to see this over here. See that? That's my Windows XP machine. It, this runs perfectly on, the, on this display. You know, I went down this road for a nostalgia trip. And I know a lot of people want me to have more tenacity and stick with it, but um, I got stuff to do. <laughs> so, 
for my own sanity. I'm going to put this down for a while. If you want me to like play any certain game that you cannot get to work on Windows 10, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll try it out. But uh, do try to do try Alice if you can get uh, you know your hands on it somewhere. Physical copies work just fine if you have a you know CD writer or a CD reader, I guess. I don't think you should install Windows 98 for games. And here's the reason: you can play most of these games that I've just mentioned. Alice from American McGee. You can play most of these games that I've just mentioned on Windows XP systems. Plus, you'll be able to play all the Windows XP games that you have available right there. So you'll have a bigger selection of games. Now, you'll have some trouble with the DOS compatibility, but DOS emulation is a thing. And in my opinion, DOS emulation is now better than the original DOS experience because with platforms like DOSBox Pure or with emulators like DOSBox Pure that you can get inside RetroArch now, you, there's a link in the description. I made a whole video on this before. But in RetroArch, there's an emulator called DOSBox Pure. And it's so easy to use. You don't need any technical knowledge. And it has quick save for all your old DOS games. Even if the game didn't have quick save, there's a quick save as part of the emulator, just like the old school like Nintendo and SNES and emulators and all that kind of stuff. So DOSBox Pure is the way I play all my DOS games. And I have that hooked up to a machine that has VGA so I can use a CRT monitor. So yeah, Windows 98 for the frustrations and everything and just the lack of plug and play support. If you have it set up with a network card with a share folder and you've got all your drivers installed and it works and you're happy and this is your favorite happy place, then by all means use Windows 98. But for me, it's a, it's a bit of a frustrating and annoying experience. It's really old. It's clunky, I, you know, the, I, my nostalgia was immediately smashed by a brick wall of no, <laughs> this is too old and you've forgotten how to use this. You you were just a kid back then. So yeah, it's, um, this was a bit of a rough experience, but whatever, it, it was, it was a good memory. I'm, I was not happy this week because I wasted too much time on it, but in a couple weeks, I'll be glad that I had a bit of a Windows 98 refresher just to, I guess, remember some of that stuff. Remember that I don't want to have a Windows 98 machine. I love this case, so I'm going to build a sleeper build in here. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get some better airflow going. I'll probably use a Dremel to cut some bigger holes or something like that. I don't know, but I want to do a sleeper build in here. Stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite games from the Windows 98 second edition era were. They can be anything from 95 to 98, just in that area that you could, that, what, what did you play on your 98 machine? You know, what was your favorite few games? Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious and uh, we'll see you next time. See if that does what I think it is. <laughs> so I used to have this as a glass. I used to go put this as like a glass breaking sound. Do we have anything like that? Any any cool sounds? Dang the Microsoft sound. Anybody have any any more sounds anywhere? I guess I have to download them. I, I, which I'm not gonna do. <laughs> Every time we open a menu. Good lord. We're leaving it. <laughs> this is how you play Alice. Where is Alice? Oh no. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. I'm delirious. We're done. <laughs>